Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. Every Friday now for over five years, we are here to mastermind with some of the, the most important leaders in the mortgage space. Uh, lots of times it's loan officers talking about current market strategies. Uh, Deborah, do you remember who, who did we have last Friday? Was that Mike Garrett or Mike? No, not Mike Garrett, Mike White? No. The one that Todd and I did? We yeah. Yeah, so I think we had a coach last week uh, talking about, you know, how to how to reorganize your business. Let's face it, the market has radically shifted. Uh, and, oh, actually, last week was the financial advisor um, playbook. But but anyways, guys, every Friday we're here to do that. Uh, let's face it, one of the, the big issues in today's market is, you know, uncertainty. Rates have gone up. Um, we're now... We're not in a war, but there's a very big war going on that, you know, has impact on the markets, has impact on interest rates. So Dan is going to share, you know, impact of war on market and interest rates. Dan Rawich has been our chief economist for over a decade. Uh, Dan, exactly how, how many years has it been that you've been doing these updates in mortgage coach land? I mean, I want to say 20 years, but I know that well, would be- we start, started in uh, 07 or 08, so close yeah. to 15 years. Yeah. And, and, and really guys, you know, that all started because of the challenges happening in the market. Uh, there was an absentee absent of leadership. No one was doing sales meetings. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to get on stage every week. I'm going to pull in some of the industry's best people and start bringing leadership weekly sales meetings. I do believe if you want to have an elite high performing culture, especially a sales growth culture, you need to meet every week and you need to bring great people in. So Dan was one of the first leaders that I brought in. And here we are 15 years later and Dan is doing a market update every single day. It's in the Rate Watch app. Uh, it's also all over social media. It's in our group. Uh, he's also evolved to where he's got an amazing premium platform called marketmentorship.com where I, I can't remember the price, but it's under $20 a month. And, you know, you have daily access to Dan. You're part of this, you know, elite group of market nerds. Uh, so there's a whole lot of value in that. Uh, we don't have Todd Bookspan today, but we have Deborah Bird, the number one social media consultant in the mortgage space. What's up, girl? Good morning. I'm going to so, do uh, Todd's just for him. Here's the peace sign for Todd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we may get um, Dan Keller in the second half of this call towards the end to share how he's using Rate Watch to go one to many and to share specific market strategies. Deborah, I'll, I'll do the interview with Dan and I know he's got some slides to share, but anytime you see something that could go one to many, like, oh, take that slide, put this framing around it and put that on social media. If you could be the one that's going to pull out the the one to many strategies. You cool with that? Yeah, I love it. I'm excited. All right. So Dan, I don't think you need much introduction, but just in mm -hmm. case there is a, a new loan officer on this call that's never heard of Dan Rawich, could you just give us a minute on who you are and then get after it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Dan Rawich, um, I've been in the industry since 1978. I was a, a sophomore in college and uh, originated FHA loans back in the day. My goal from day one was to work on Wall Street. Uh, and with that focus, uh, in the very early 80s, I was recruited by Bear Stearns, uh, working on their bond desk, their fixed income desk, actually. Um, and from there, things just happened. I founded uh, RPM Mortgage in 89, uh, sold that to a public company called Finet, ran that as their CEO, and then just lots of different positions within the industry. Um, but now I think for the last five years or so, I've had University of Options where we teach people how to trade options um, and uh, Market Mentor, which helps mortgage loan officers understand what's happening in the market and how to speak intelligently to their clients so they can build credibility, more credibility in the marketplace. So that's who I am. And, and I want to just add a couple of cliff notes to that. So Dan knows how to sell in the mortgage space. He knows how to train loan officers to sell in the mortgage space. He has been a market nerd uh, working on Bear Stearns, one of the most prestigious places to learn how to trade. And, and he has studied the economy now for multiple decades. So uh, any new loan officer listening in, this dude is a guy that you need to study. You know, every morning he does a less than three minute video on this is what's happening in the market. And this is what you need to know as a loan officer. 
And so if you're not watching those every day for the first 90 days you're in the business, you're blowing it. You know, like, like if your first 90 days, watch those every day and then decide, hey, do I want to be a market nerd and watch that every day or do I want to watch it once a week? You know, but, but I think every mortgage professional in America should listen to Dan at least once a week. And then, you know, you pick how often and how much you want to get into it. So, so Dan, let's rock, brother. All right. Uh, let me jump into my slides here. Let's share my screen. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to turn off my video when you're talking. So anytime I turn on my video, just know that I'm, I want to say something. All right. I'll miss you. Okay, so here's this title, Warren Inflation, uh, How Will Rates React? Uh, just I apologize in advance. You know, there's going to be a slight negative uh, twist here. Um, if anybody has not read the book, Good to Great, you should. Uh, one of the things that always, unbelievable. We have the worst dog in the world. It, it's all good. We got dogs. It's always the little one, right? You don't hear. Uh, wait, hey, hey, just, just roll through it. Like everybody's got a dog. Well. I have dogs, so we're good with I have that. four right. kids, so everyone should have it. a dog or a kid. Yeah. Um, anyway, one one of the things that, uh, in the book uh, we said that facing the brutal facts in life or in any situation is not negative. Uh, it's constructive and it's important. And there are some brutal facts going on in the world, in the economy, uh, and, and in our own business. So that's what I'm here to bring forward at the moment. Um, and some of these slides, most of them are in, in fairly good order, but uh, the, the basic theme here is going to be war, inflation, and rates. Those are, I think, things that, that are really pertinent right now. Um, you know, what, what you're seeing here is uh, the Thomson Reuter Commodity CRB Index. It's really just known as a CRB Index. And um, I, I use this uh, as part of my macro understanding of what's going on in the world. Um, and you can see this is going back to the crash of 08 and you can see just how elevated commodities became so this is a basket of economy uh, uh, of uh, commodities uh, gold and silver and wheat and everything that matters uh, uh, from a commodity standpoint is in this basket and you can see that since the crash of 08 it has been in a really nice steady uh, downtrend um, and by the way this reverse megaphone is a very bullish pattern except we didn't want this to be bullish. We want this to stay low. Um, this is give you a clue to where inflation is going and therefore where rates are likely headed. Uh, so you can see that uh, right after the pandemic, the CRB index just began climbing and climbing and climbing. My hope is that it stays here. What you see down here is an actual megaphone pattern because again, the, the mouthpiece would be here and this is a bearish pattern. So this is telling you that most likely we should see commodities begin to soften here uh, pretty quickly. Um, but this whole Russian thing is throwing a curveball to everything. So here is uh, uh, inflation going back uh, to 1913. Uh, and you can see that, sorry guys, um, we t this is really the stock market, uh, but I want you to think in terms of uh, bonds as well. Um, you can see that infl inflation has really kind of, uh, uh, sorry, these are, these are recessionary periods and they've really come during war times. And then after the war is when we typically see uh, the stock market jump, but during the war, we do tend to get inflationary jumps. You can see here, CPI up 74%. That's a consumer price index. Uh, this happened uh, about the middle of the war. CPI here during World War I jumped quite a bit at the beginning of the war. Vietnam, the entire period of the war was inflationary. Wars can be very inflationary. Um, uh, and they also will precede uh, recessions most of the time. This is interest rates going back to 1957. This will give you kind of an idea of what happens uh, you know, during, during war times. And I'll tell you, just a quick spoiler alert, there's not really a clear message here. You know, I, I wish I could show you that every single time there's been a war, uh, rates have fallen. I can tell you every time there's a war, recessions have followed and then recessions bring very, very low rates. So it's really not a question of uh, if rates will come down, it's, it, it's when. And before we could answer that, we have to say, what are the long-term effects on this uh, Russian-Ukraine situation? And I'll, I'll kind of give you some, some thoughts there. But you know, in 1960, we, we had the Bay of Pigs uh, and you can see uh, that brought us into a recession. 
And you can see that uh, this is the 10 year uh, constant maturity rate. 10 year rates fell quite a bit uh, during that war period. You can see here Vietnam uh, brought us into a recession, but keep in mind, it started way back here uh, sometime about the middle of Vietnam. It finally was too much of a drag on the economy, brought us into a recession, brought rates down uh, tremendously. Uh, of course, we had the oil crisis. This was the peak of all of our problems uh, in 1980, uh, I'd been in the business for a couple of years. I was selling 16% adjustable rate mortgages. So when adjustables were born. Um, and again, that brought us into a pretty serious recession um, and down we came. Uh, I think you're kind of getting the, 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 the theme here. We had the uh, savings and loan crisis. This is about when I started uh, RPM Mortgage. Uh, SNLs were, were, it was really, they ended, they, they became extinct, replaced by banks. Uh, the problem, by the way, just, just anecdotally is um, for many, many years prior to this, banks made uh, uh, fixed rate loans and they held them in their portfolio. And so during this whole period, you, you accumulated five and 6% interest rates. And then all of a sudden you're having to pay your depositors 10, 12, 15%. Do the math. I've got 6% income coming in. I'm paying out 12 to 15%. It bankrupted the situation. I was working for Bear Stearns at this point. It was, I hate to say it, it was a really fun time because we were helping these banks liquidate billions and billions of dollars of their fixed rate portfolio and swap them out for, for adjustable rates. But again, this whole thing, once again, brought us into a recession, part of the 87 crash. Look what happened to rates again. Uh, of course, then we had the uh, Asian contagion and the tech bubble, boom, recession, boom, rates. So just keep following what happens to these rates after every recession. It's really cut and dry, guys. There is absolutely no way in my, in my mind that we don't see a sub 1% 10-year note. Uh, I, you want to know when, right? Go ahead, Dave. So coaching note to everyone, you know, now what I'm going to say applies to every market at all times, your database should be your number one priority. So if you are a local referral-based mortgage professional, make sure your database is updated. Make sure you have the tools that you need so that you can optimize. That means you need mortgage coach and you need to be doing annual reviews. That means you need to have sales boomerang so that you're getting alerts based off of behaviors. I'm a big fan of HomeBot. And, 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 and your database is going to be gold again, like rate and term refis aren't a thing right now, but cash out refis are a thing right now. And if Dan's right, which he always is, or at least he usually is, um, get ready guys, you know, there, there'll be, uh, rates will come down. It's a question of when. So back at you, Dan, on, on the win and what to look for and what to do in the meantime. Yeah. Okay, so real it, quick, I want to, I want to interject because I, if I were a loan officer on this call right now. This slide right here and everything that Dan is explaining is exactly what I would do for one to many with educating clients on interest rates and the war and everything that Dan just said. So guys, remember, this is always uploaded in uh, the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit the little bell things. I have a lot of clients that reach out to me and they're like, "How do? where do I view this? If you just click the bell notification, it'll notify you every time that one of these recordings has been you know uploaded so re-listen to what dan just said and other parts of this interview because i know dan's going to drop massive knowledge um, but this is the burning question that people need education on for your agents and your consumers yeah thank, thanks thanks Deborah. it's really good feedback and also i'm happy to help you guys i mean one of the things i was thinking about just when i was listening to deborah it was i'd be willing to do a workshop to help you do a presentation just using three or four of these slides. We don't have to complicate it. Um, you don't have to be giving, you know, one hour presentations, but you should be doing quick, quick videos saying, hey, here's what's going on right now. And here's where I think this is going to take us. And if you do those regularly, your clients start looking for them. And, and that's all of a sudden you become the trusted advisor. So, so Dan, thanks. that is amazing. Thank you. I know Jeremy Baxter, which I love Jeremy so interactive with this group, he is excited to talk to you. So where would people reach out to you? How would they, if they want to have a mastermind where you teach? Do they email um, let's, let's, how about send an email to dan at 
universityofoptions.com. And, and, and guys, by the way, I just to help Dan out here, you, you really need to be a market mentor customer to, to I say Dan to even get that, but I'll leave that to you. Uh, but that is a very generous offer. And I'm, here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for some loan officers that are ballers that do that. And then you get some results and then let me know and I'll interview you because I would love to see loan officers in our community collaborating with Dan and Deborah and shine a light on that. You know, at the end of the day, the mortgage coach mission is to change how people get into debt. That means we need to help mortgage coaches be on every stage in the industry or in the planet or in the country. All right, bro. Yeah. And also just, you know, the market mentor program, um, that's my favorite thing about it. I wish our, I actually wish our members would use it more. We, we have, you know, a whole bunch of members and, you know, I would say maybe a couple times a week to some, well, I get asked to jump on a call with their realtors or, or help them prepare a quick slide. Um, and that's really what I'm here for. I, that's what I love doing. Okay. Next. Um, this is more or less the same, but you have a uh, civil war, 1860. How's that? You didn't know you can go black that far. Uh, you have the uh, post-World War I inflation. Uh, you have World War II. And what you can see is during this whole entire period, yields have fallen. Um, now, this was a fairly old slide. I had went into my library and pulled out as many as I could. And actually, Dan Keller originally asked me if I had these type of slides. I said I would check my library and like... Uh, knucklehead they never sent them to him so sorry dan um if hope you listen to this recording get my apology anyway so this is going back to 2016 when the 10 year was 1.37 which was unbelievable at that time um this is again long-term u.s interest rates going back to 1790 I, I just think these slides are golden uh, and they really do help your borrowers understand uh, what's been going on. I, I think, I don't know if you were like me in, in high school, I, I, I just hated history. I thought it was so stupid. Um, and as, and as I uh, got older, and even more so now than ever, history is cool. And, and there's so much that we learn from the past. Uh, there's that saying, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it, al but it almost always rhymes. And as you know, I'm a big guy on time cycles, and I do have some more data on cycles. These cycles absolutely do repeat themselves. And so you can see what's happened to interest rates during these you know, major events. And generally speaking, during major significant events, rates will drop following them. Uh, same thing again, just a little bit more data in terms of the war, the oil embargo, uh, uh, this is going back 171 years. And again, I think you'll see the theme following major events, we do see dips in interest rates. Uh, I think we've seen enough of these now. And here's one. This is a fun one. It's attractive. This is 200 years of interest rates. Uh, uh, same theme, but but some different information. Like when the railroads were built, thirty thousand miles of railroads were constructed in eighteen sixty nine. Boom, rates went down. Um, and why this created a significant expense and drag on the economy once they were built, and then you could see uh, how how uh, recessions followed and rates dropped. So now we're getting into current times. Uh, and this is uh, Goldman Sachs uh, prediction. And they are saying, we think the surge in goods inflation caused by shortages and rising commodity prices has likely peaked and should moderate by year end. However, it will likely take longer than we initially expected for all of durable prices to come down. Um, I have to tell you uh, with, a, with, a, with a great excuse, I was wrong. Um, well, kind of. Nah, I'm never wrong. Forget that. No, seriously, I I have said uh, I have I don't agree with the Fed too often, uh, but I did agree when they were saying uh, inflation was transient, and the Fed and I both look kind of stupid right now. I I will tell you that uh, I, I did not factor in, and I know this is going to sound political, and I maybe it is, and I'm sorry. We shouldn't have shut down our Keystone pipeline. We we should not have stopped producing oil in this country. We were, in, we were totally independent from an energy standpoint. And I don't know why it made sense to stop making oil here to help the, you know, help the environment. I'm all about that. Trust me, I'm as green as the next guy. I, I love the idea of going green, but how is Russia's oil 
more green than ours. Like if, you could, if someone's going to produce oil, it ought, it should have been us. Um, and, and what that's done to oil prices, I think, you know, and now we are paying billions of dollars to a country uh, that's not very nice to, to get their oil. And that has created inflationary problems that you cannot imagine. And we'll go into some of those here. Um, this is the yield curve. Now, uh, this is actually the spread between the two year and the 10 year treasury. This is the most significant thing I'm gonna show you today uh, in terms of uh, forward looking. Now, historically, the difference between, now again, think about a yield curve. You have a short term interest rate way down here. Uh, then you have a long-term interest rate here. That's what that axis looks like. And then you have rate on this axis. And as you go longer term, rates go up, right? That's historically what happens. You have a positive slope in the yield curve. The, the slope of that yield curve tells economists so much about what's coming. Uh, an inverted yield curve has predicted seven of the last recessions. What an inverted yield curve means is that the 10-year rate is lower than the two-year rate. And that's a very strange concept, isn't it? But every single time it's inverted, recession, every single time, well, past seven times. Uh, we almost inverted, uh, we touched on it. Well, actually, we did invert for a few days there just before the pandemic. Uh, people wanna say the pandemic caused the recession. I don't care. I, I just will tell you that when the yield curve inverts, the, the universe will invent a reason for a recession. Um, and look where we're headed now, guys. Does that seem weird to you? that with all this talk of inflation, that the yield curve would be uh, uh, inverted. I mean, you can see what happened back in the 80s. Uh, the yield curve was, was, was fairly wide. So historic yield curve would be about 1.5%. It's currently 0.41. I think today it's down to 0.31. You got something, Dave? Yeah, well, I just wanted to call out to anyone listening to this. You know, Dan has always given us great perspective. In fact, in the last update, you were, you were not because you have a crystal ball, but because you look at trends, you look at what's happening, you really called what was happening and, and, it, and, and you know, what happened with interest rates, what happened with a global conflict. Uh, I just want to call it out, guys. Like, go listen to the last call. It's in our, our group, and it's probably still a valuable call. While some of the, the intelligence, you know, it's kind of already played out. Um, it's still just a great lesson, especially if you're a new loan officer. I would highly recommend, you know, obviously his daily updates are pure gold, but go into our um, YouTube channel, go into the search. You can search by channel, put in Dan Rawich, start with his most recent interviews, but go and watch a couple of those and you'll, you'll learn something and you'll also learn like this dude's right. Uh, so anyways, that's all. Keep going, man. Thanks. Yeah, the one I'm most proud of, I, I, I never had to say to brag about this one. I, it was either April or May of last year um, when rates had really shot up uh, and, I, and I called the peak. But the reason I called the peak was a reason that most people can't get their minds around because I can't. And that is these time cycles. Why do they keep repeating? Andrew Pincelli, who you really ought to Google this guy and read as much about him as you can, Hedge funds and Wall Street firms pay him millions of dollars, uh, uh, hundreds of thousands a year, uh, because he is a real world renowned time cycle analyst. He's a data scientist and he studied cycles going back 600 years. And he created, he had this 100,000 foot warehouse. Imagine a timeline going around a 100,000 square foot warehouse, every event that's ever happened. And that's programmed into a computer. And that computer spits out data that is frighteningly accurate. My my options trading group made a killing uh, when the, when oil went below zero. Andrew told us to the day. Andrew told us on February twenty fourth that uh, Russia would, would would invade Ukraine. Set it to the date. Uh, he he said on two thousand nineteen uh, in a conversation I had with him that twenty twenty two was going to be a war cycle, um, and we needed to prepare for that. Um, and so when you're prepared, you can you can really benefit from, from this type of situation. So this is going to be a tough year, guys. Um, and there are many cycles. The thir 30 years ago, the USSR was was was, you know, done. The Cold War was over. That's part of a uh, 
cycle that goes every 30 years. 30 years before that, almost to the day, was a Cuban Missile Crisis. 30 years before that, that was something else. These cycles repeat themselves over and over and over. It's really weird. Um, so why, why is the yield curve getting flatter when we have inflation? Because a, a, a long-term bond investor, somebody buying the 10, 20, 30-year bond, their biggest fear is inflation. Because if I commit to a, a 2% 30-year investment or 10-year investment, and inflation goes up 2% a year for the next couple of years, I have a negative yielding asset. That's, that's no fun. So, so the 10-year will shoot up faster than anything, um, be, and it'll shoot up much faster than the two-year because the longer-term investor is more afraid of inflation than the shorter term. Now, the yield curve is about to invert, and the Fed has not raised rates yet. So let's pretend the Fed raised one half a percent. I'm not saying that they will, but let's pretend that they do. And let's pretend when that happens, the 10-year bond says, I, I don't care. I don't care what the Fed's doing. And it doesn't move. Well, if the two-year goes up a half a percent and the 10-year doesn't move, you have an inverted yield curve. If the Fed raises 25 basis points, which I think will happen, and the 10-year says this, I don't agree with you, Fed. I think you're stupid. And I think we got a problem. And that problem is not inflation. That problem is a recession. Therefore, because you raised rates, I'm going to lower rates because the market decides what's going to happen with the 10-year. And the 10-year will rally when the Fed uh, increases. So the Fed will go up 25. The 10-year will come down 25. And you have an inverted yield curve. And then you have this. And then you have this. It happens every time, like clockwork. Um, now, this has uh, been a really difficult time to predict. I've gotten probably more emails this last month or so than I have maybe all year put together of people saying, well, what is going on? You know, you, you, the rates go up and, and it looks like everything's going fine and things are rallying and then boom, it gets bad again. Well, this just think of this as volatility and think of these, these, these you know, uh, uh, graphs here as as disruptions in the force and these are the kind of the worst moves that we've had in history and this is starting to gear up that way this was the pandemic down here is the move index if you if you follow the stock market at all you know what the vix is vix it is the fear index for the stock market it measures volatility it measures investors perception of what's going to happen in the stock market when there's fear vix shoots up stocks go down. The move index is the fear index for bonds. Uh, not, not good. Not good at all. That's where it was in the pandemic. So we have more fear in the bond market right now than we have almost in history other than, than the pandemic here. Um, and, and with that comes, comes extreme volatility in rates. It doesn't necessarily mean that rates just go up. It just means there's extreme volatility. Um, this is the market's current perception of what the Fed is going to do. Um, so many people are thinking that uh, on Mar on, on, in March of 2022, 20, which is coming up, I think the Fed meeting is next week, um, uh, you're, you're seeing people uh, believe that uh, 25 basis points is the norm. And by the way, on February 25th, the market believed there'd be a 32 basis point increase. That's an average. And then in May, people are looking for a much bigger increase. And in June, bigger. So, so um Actually, sorry, this is cumulative. This is not each each time. And so this is telling you that by December of 2022, Fed funds will have jumped 175 basis points. What is that going to do the yield curve? <laughs> I mean, think about it. this is just the short term rates. If the Fed raises the Fed funds rate 175 basis points, the two year bond will probably go up at least one or one and a quarter percent. I'm telling you, the 10 year will not go up. It will go down and the yield curve is going to get so inverted. And the and the the more the yield curve inverts, the faster the recession will come. Um, and I know probably everybody's wondering, oh my God, this is terrible. It, it could be terrible for the economy. It will not be terrible for your refinance business. Um, I don't think it will be terrible for your housing, your purchase business, but I do think this time housing might just take a little bit of a, a chip out of it, but, but I don't see a housing crash. I, I really don't. Um, says good luck trading bonds lately. Extreme volatility as bonds are all over the place. Note the extreme move in negative yielding debt. Uh, this is the, the amount of shorts held in, in, in bonds right now. Investors are extremely short bonds right now, which is very strange, but it's also why you're getting these huge moves when it does rally. So you have a bunch of people that are betting that bonds are going to get worse 
meaning rates are going to go higher, prices are going to go lower. And so what do they do? They short it because when then if they're right and rates fall, then they make a lot of money. And then all of a sudden they panic when there's a when there's a, a war breaking out and they cover their shorts. And that's what causes these these, you know, nice moves in bond prices. Uh, okay, now 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 I'm going to go back and justify my 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 in, inflation call. Um, I, and I did say clearly, and if I sound defensive, I apologize. I probably am. Um, I have said all along that inflation will not get better until the supply chain gets better. Uh, but I did not believe the supply chain would be broken for so long. This is the congestion at the ports around the world, fully bottlenecked, almost to a 10. So, so you have, actually, this is the overall supply chain congestion scale. This is not good. I would have expected it to be more a little bit in the green by now. And until this cures itself, I don't think you're going to see inflation completely moderate. Um, this is relating to the stock market. This is showing you that there's so much fear in the market right now. Uh, it's almost a buy signal. Because you can see when fear gets really bad, this is where it bottomed uh, during the pandemic. That's when things get really good. Fear goes away and people start buying stocks. So remember what Warren Buffett has always said. When people are fearful, you should be greedy. And when people are greedy, you should be fearful. So this is probably becoming a pretty soon a pretty good buying opportunity in the stock market. Uh, which is also going to maybe put pressure on bonds. Dave? Um, and maybe you're going to get here, but I want to make sure we really net out for folks that, you know, it's a great time to buy a house and that, you know, the real estate market's strong, if you believe it is. So if you could net it out at the end, you know, one of the biggest problems loan officers are having in this market is um, either rate shopping because rates have gone up and, you know, big banks are quoting and all things around that, but also just, you know, hey, did I, did I miss it? Should I buy a house now or should I wait? So if you could just net that out um, at some point between now and the end of the call. I will, sure. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're still pretty good. Um, you know, I, Ray, Dave mentioned the rate shopping uh, 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 dilemma and I'm not gonna um, discount that at all. But I, I want you to really remember something, and, and this is something I learned the hard way uh, after many years as a loan officer. Um, you can't win with rate shoppers. And statistically, it has gone up a bit. I don't have a real current number, but this number will shock you. Only about 35% of consumers really, truly rate shop. And by that, I mean, they're on the phone with multiple loan officers. They're getting a bunch of quotes. As opposed to somebody that listens to the radio commercials, maybe does a quick uh, uh, Google search and, and pulls up, uh, quickens um, interest rates. That's not really rate shopping. That's rate educating. But a true shopper will grind you to your death. That The loan will never be done, even when you think it's done. And you have to learn as a salesperson to cut through those people and not work with them. They will torture you. You and and think about yourself. Now, if you're a true rate shopper, then then you're gonna disagree with me. But 60 or 65 percent of you actually will get a little educated, but you won't shop. So I, Dan, Dan, we got to pause on that and do a little sales training. Are you done with that before I add on? Yeah. Well, let me just real quick. I'm gonna. I won't move on from it, but but just want to make a real quick point. Um, I I don't shop. Guys, I, I, I kind of do. I make the salesperson think that I shopped. Um, but I, if, if I connect with a person and I trust them and I'm busy, I'm done. Let's just move on. I, I trust you. You're going to give me a good deal, right? Uh, my, my, the thing that I always said to every single borrower is, guess what? There's only one place that the industry goes for their water. And that's Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. One place, we all serve water from the same well. Do you really think that Quicken is pulling their water from a different well? No, it's the same well. So what you need to worry about is how is that water served to you? Is it splashed in your face or is it nice, clear drinking water? That's it. So guys, first of all, there was some great scripting in that conversation, but for every manager, and I'd never heard it communicated this way, there is a difference between rate shopping and rate education. And, and I want you to all start thinking, you know, hey, is this guy really grinding me? And he's one of that, 
and I don't know what the percent is. There's, let's just say between 10 and 20%, no matter what you say, how you say it, they are do it yourself, low cost leaders, and they're not your people. But, and there are 20% of people that will never, they won't rate educate, they won't rate shop. They're not like, you were the first one there, you gave them this beautiful TCA, they love you and they're good. But everybody's getting rates. Like, like if you just say the word mortgage out loud in your house, it will show up, you'll get rates in social media. You know, next time you log in to social media, if you do a search for a house, you're gonna get everybody's shopping rates, everybody's educating. So I do wanna remind people the best practice at Mortgage Coach, and we've got some great interviews. I'm actually gonna put a link to the Gina, um, Gina Myers interview, where it was how to win with rate shoppers, and you show them options. So option one is, no cost, little higher rate, little bit of cost, little lower rate, little more cost, little lower rate, and then put one and a half to two points, high cost, low rate, and let them shop. And by the way, let them educate on your platform. And so they feel heard. They feel like they got options. And now when they pick the rate, they pick the loan officer. And also they don't look at you based off of your fee worksheet. Like if you give them one rate, one fee, they're looking that that's you it's you're the product you're that one program so so again we'll put that link down below but D dan and, and deborah let's make some micro content out of this little rate shopping rant between dan and i and we'll put a link to the G gina myers winning with rate shoppers quote um quote and on scriptapalooza which is this tuesday we're going to have multiple badass some of the best loan officers in america talk about how they're navigating that conversation with rate educators and rate shoppers. So keep it rocking, Don. That was a nice little, you know, that wasn't market intel, but it was some great sales strategy training on your part. So thank you. My pleasure. And one, one, one more thing just to add to that, because this fascinated me. Um, so we recently bought a new uh, coach, you know, a, a new RV. Um, you know, it's it's you know, sort of our dream coach. It's not new. Um, and there's so many things that can go wrong with these things. And, um, and, and so I wanted to get an extended warranty and, um, believe it or not, an extended warranty for this thing for a four-year warranty. Uh, the first quote I got was $21,000. Um, and I almost, you know, threw up, um, and I called another guy and, uh, it was about 18,000 and I got, found out what carrier it was. And I found out, you know, it's kind of the same carrier. So I went back to the first guy who I really liked a lot and, and I told him what I found. And he said to me really kind of sweetly, like if I was face to face, he would have been smiling. He said, are you grinding on me? And I said, no, no, I'm not grinding on you. I'm, I'm just trying to understand the difference. And he goes, okay. Cause I don't really deal with people that grind. You know, I, pro I provide the best, this, the best, that. And I, I said to my wife after I said, that should have offended me. Like, but, he handled it so well. And I, I understood where he was coming from. And then he said, but I'll tell you what I will do. You know, I'll, I'll take $500 off. And so I still paid 2000 more for his warranty than the other one. He just called me out. Are you grinding on me? Cause I don't have time for that. And it's like, Whoa, you are a pro. So, so keep that in mind. I can, okay. I can see Jeremy Forcier adding that to his repertoire. That sounds like a Jeremy quote. Or Jeremy, Jeremy would be so good at delivering that. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he's already doing that. So <laughs> he probably is. <laughs> Never. There's a, there's another little nugget from, yeah. from Dan. Yeah. Let's roll. I can see Jeremy. Look, I have a bucket of grinders and non-grinders. Which bucket should I put you in? <laughs> the non-grinders get all my attention. All right. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what is the current effect on Russia and where's this going to take us? Um, and so price of wheat, yikes. Um, uh, you know, all the things that get baked from wheat, uh, we're going to see in continued inflation because of that. Um, the Harpix shipping index is still harping to new highs, guys. This is the cost to ship. I mean, it was, we were talking about like, you know, $500 to maybe a thousand for, for a container from China almost $5,000. Do you know what that does to the average cost of a television? Uh, uh, it, 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 it really does have a huge effect on our inflation. Uh, these are container spot rates. 
they kind of started trending down, but it's still too expensive to ship stuff. And it's going to get worse now because this whole Russian problem is going to close some shipping lanes. Um, this is what happened to the S&P after the start of 19 wars since 1990. And what you can see is the market kind of does get over it. This is generally speaking here, the mean and the stock market has continued to go up after 19 wars. And I tell you that now, I'm not necessarily bullish on the stock market, but I am telling you there's gonna be some incredible buying opportunities. Uh, okay, here we go. House appreciation, um, this is Goldman Sachs. Uh, they do believe that we're gonna see housing appreciation break from the upward trajectory. And guys, boy, is that a good thing. Uh, I know it's not necessarily something you would want to uh, uh, get excited about, but we cannot continue to have double digit price increases. It's not normal. And what I've always told borrowers when I was a loan officer is go back uh, 60, 70, 80, 100 years and the average home appreciation is about five to 6%. Well, if you buy a $400,000 home, which it's hard to find now anywhere, and you put 10% down, that's $40,000. If your house goes up 5% on a $400,000 home, your house went up 20 grand. Did you make 5% on your money? No, you didn't because you put 40 down and your house went up 20. You made 50% return on your down payment. That's what people have to remember. So, so these days cannot continue. And if they do continue, housing will be in a bubble that's going to blow up on all of our faces. So I like this. This is healthy. And this actually might start creating some inventory because this is creating seller greed. This is going to create seller motivation. So I, I think this is going to be a good thing for housing. Um, and it has to happen, guys. Look at housing affordability. Uh, this one snuck up on me. Housing affordability is uh, lower than it's been since the crash of uh, 07. And remember, housing affordability is two components. It is interest rates and it is housing prices. So interest rates are still phenomenal, but housing prices are not. So the two together are what create the affordability index. Um, this is this is getting um, frighteningly low, in my opinion. We need to see either rates drop again to pull this back up, or we need to see um, uh, housing prices drop just a little bit. But I really would love to see housing affordability to get back over 100. It's not far below it now, but just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, the Chase Consumer Credit Card credit tracking, um, you know, people are still spending money, um, but... Uh, look where we were back uh, before the pandemic. We're still not really quite where we were prior to the pandemic. So really how great are things? Again, this is, is going to argue for lower rates. Uh, the oil crisis, look at this. This is uh, now back to where it was back. I remember when I was a kid and we would stand in the, we would wait in the car with these fuel lines that were sometimes all day and you, you could only buy fuel on certain days um this 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 could happen guys um this really really could happen and by the way this preceded a pretty good recession um back again to Ru russia russia the, so you can buy you can invest in any countries and i suggest that you do um you don't want to have all your eggs in the u.s stock market so there's etfs which are exchange traded funds uh which means this etf the stock symbol is uh, er us and if you invest in that, you're investing in Russian stocks, you know, a bunch of Russian companies. And there's an ETF for every single country. Look what happened to the Russian stock market from 48 to 12. That was a 16 sigma or a 16 standard deviation move down. Don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. Uh, this will have an effect across markets around the world because a lot of US money was lost in this, in this move down. Um, this is the uh, fear of Russian default on their debt that's coming. And again, that's going to have a very dramatic effect on the stock markets and bond markets, et cetera, equaling lower rates. Um, oil, by the way, is about to be a big, the big short. Um, but you know what? There's no resistance in the oil prices until $120 a barrel. Um, I don't think it's going to get up that high, but I think pretty soon oil is going to come crashing down, hopefully at least to 90 so we're going to short oil pretty soon. Um, and higher oil does historically create higher inflation. Um, but it also, every single time we've had increase in oil prices like this, we've had a recession. 
recessions equal low rates. But just anecdotally, this is the RSI, which is the relative strength index. Uh, overbought is this purple line. Oil is so overbought right now, it's crazy. So uh, if you're a member of our options trading program, look out, or even market mentors, because uh, I give weekly stock picks, we're going to be putting a short on oil pretty soon. Um, this is, I made that comment. Um, I know it's probably perceived political, and, and it is political, but it's not mis necessarily meant to be about us supporting Russia by buying their oil. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Their oil is no greener than ours was. So we should be producing oil in this country, at least for now. This is how much money we're pouring into Russia. We're creating a multi-billion dollar uh, surplus for them every single day uh, with what they've done to oil prices and now we're buying that oil. So this is what's keeping them afloat. This is what's funding their war. And this is what's telling me their war is not gonna end quickly. Sanctions are no section. This is the last uh, slide. And this is the um, elevated medium term risk uh, of recession. And you can see it's it's jumped up uh, a, a lot. And the last time that it was this high, well, it got a little bit higher in 16, but we kind of had a mini recession here, but look where it was just before the uh, 07, 08 recession. And look where it was just before the 2000 crash. So we're, we're, we're getting up there at pre pretty high probability. And actually, I have one more thing I want to show you real quick, because uh, I, I do accidentally take credit for uh, some of Andrew's work, uh, and I don't want to do that. Um, so these are the kinds of things that, that uh, I, I get from Andrew on a, on a regular basis, and he's constantly reminding me of the cycles. And this is talking about the Crimean War, which broke out in 1853. Um, Britain and France did not declare a, a Russia until the 28th, which was six months later. So for that reason, and this is part of the war cycle, um, for it, this will be with us for at least six months. Uh, we're in a 60-year cycle from 62 that saw the Cold War escalate to the Cuban Missile Crisis. We're, already, we're also in a 30-year cycle, which is the breakup of the USSR uh, in play. And then uh, in terms of the food chain and what this can do, these are small things, but they add up. This was the biggest plane in the world. Uh, this plane was used to or originally to transport the space shuttle. Then it was used to transport jet engines, huge, huge things that cannot be carried by another plane. Uh, and it was used extensively to carry supplies during the pandemic. Uh, this plane was blown up uh, during this last uh, war outbreak. This plane no longer exists. Uh, and it was a very important plane for the world to transport things that nothing else can transport. Um, and so as this recursion continues, it will exacerbate the global supply chain problems. 34 years, uh, for the last 34 years, there's, oh, sorry, we just talked about that one. Um, this is not said in the slide, but the, um, well, I, I will just leave it with, with the supply chain is, is, a, is a huge problem. And what's happening here is the airspace, uh, Russia's airspace is now no longer available to 36 different nations or their airlines. This creates huge challenges for Europeans trying to get to the Far East and Japan. Equally, Russian aircraft are now boxed in pretty much. All of this means something. We don't trade a lot with Russia, but we need that airspace. Um, last but not least, uh, crypto. I'm, I'm putting crypto is now becoming part of my, uh, my program. I've been slow to, to start teaching crypto for reasons that I did not feel qualified, but for the last two years, I've been really extensively studying crypto. What this is going to do for the crypto market is crazy. Crypto is going to go crazy. Andrew says here, I do think there's a potential bullish aspect for cryptocurrencies, um, and it could lead to greater demand for Bitcoin. Okay, that's it, Dave. Wow. So before we bring Dan Keller on stage, I want to make sure anyone that wants to, you know, have more access to you, whether it's for your, you know, help them with the slide before a realtor presentation, whether it's to hear your investment ideas, just give us a minute or less on market mentorship. You know, where do they go? What is it? And then Dan, if you could, if you're on video, turn on your video because you're going to jump on stage in a minute. Yeah. So, so um, if you want to learn more about Market Mentor, um, uh, it, it used to be under twenty, but Dave, we got inflation. It's twenty-four bucks a month now, um, and uh, and and that that includes um, live 
uh, interest rate and market updates twice a day to an exclusive Facebook group. It includes daily content that you can share with your clients um, that you should share with your clients. Uh, it includes a weekly video that gives an entire rundown. It's about a 18 to 20 minute video uh, that gives a complete rundown of the week before um, uh, in, uh, in terms of the economy, what happened and what we expect is going to happen uh, the following week. And, uh, and, and then it's always capped with uh, six to eight stock picks. And I'm proud to say, uh, as of Sunday, uh, we've had 25 out of 26 winning weeks. Um, and our, our win rate on the stocks that we've picked is uh, 81%. And I share that, I share that data every single Sunday night. Um, and then of course we have University of Options if you wanna really get into the markets and learn how to trade options and now crypto. So guys- All right, Dan Keller. All right, check it out, guys. So what I want to have Dan speak to, and then Deborah, you'll be Todd today, give everybody taking action notes and any one to many suggestions. But Dan has followed Dan Rawich. Dan Keller has followed Dan Rawich for forever. And he listens to his updates. He uses our Rate Watch app. And the other day I had Dan on a call and he was sharing some pretty cool ways that he was taking uh, you know, the updates. Like, guys, this is, this is Rate Watch right here. And, you know, for example, today in the date watch, you could have it this way, or you can turn it and have it that way. But he was telling how he was taking this and creating content. And so Dan, if you could just describe to everyone what you're doing and how you're leveraging this with both realtors and home buyers. Yeah, absolutely. Real quick. Um, first off, holy smokes, Dan Rawich. <laughs> I mean, unreal. I mean, that, that's, uh, I hope nobody reaches out to you without a minimum of, of, of a handful of hundred dollar bills to get those <laughs> slides or to get helps. Cause that was, and I did in the comments, I was like, get, let me know your price. And I'd love to interview you for five minutes because you guys, this is our time. I just made a video in a private group that I have for loan officers. I said, this is our time to shine. This is our time to dance right now as mortgage professionals. There is, in my opinion, in my 15 years in the mortgage industry, maybe one or two other times where our information, our updates, our feedback, our explanation is more important now than ever. And so this stuff today, Dan, was just so helpful. And I appreciate everything you do every single morning. And I appreciate Mortgage Coach with Great Watch. Uh, the, yeah, I reached out to Dan a couple of weeks ago. And I said, hey, man, I'm researching the hell out of <laughs> what rates do af during and after wartime. Would you happen to have any slides? And then up comes this uh, this live training. So thank you guys both for doing this. This is just great. Um, really, I have to run into a buy a, a borrower meeting in five minutes. So I've got literally three minutes. So we'll have to do a separate call on this, Dave. But I did some research this morning on how to actually share my iPhone in a Zoom call. And I'd love to do this with you guys, even if we you and I just did it impromptu, Dave. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a screenshot of Rate Watch, just like that right now. And on an iPhone, right here, guys. All, look, you're look right, right there. Here. So, and by the way, you could take the screenshot, guys, or there's a little share button in the upper right hand corner, and I could go copy to clipboard, email. Uh, so, screenshot or other ways to do it. And then go ahead, Dan. So, on an iPhone, you just you, you squeeze both side buttons at the same time, and it takes a screenshot of your screen. Boom. Then I go to my then I go to my Instagram. And I put it in like I'm going to share an Instagram story. From there, I can just type. I can type whatever I want. I can actually draw. So what I do when, when I got clients asking me about rates or saying, hey, they got a lower rate somewhere else or they saw something online, I use Rate Watch, take it into Instagram, type a couple of comments, maybe draw something. Uh, I always say the trend, I learned this from Dan, the trend is your friend. So I talk a lot about trends there. Hey, see this new trend we've got. So, and then I screenshot that, maybe crop it up just a tad, and I send it over via text to my clients. Guys, it's worked wonders with explaining. I get incredible feedback on it. So that's one of the ways I'm using Rate Watch to explain rates to clients and rate shoppers right now. So guys, if anybody who follows me on Instagram, I'm actually going to put it right now. I do want you guys to know in the upper right-hand corner, one, you could share that, so make that part of your story. So depending on how generic the advice is, wouldn't hurt to be doing, especially in a market like this, to be doing one or two of these on your actual story. 
Um, and the way I have Instagram set up that every time I push a story, it saves that photo. Uh, and then also, if you look at that little hamburger, that little button in the upper right hand corner, it has three dots. It says draw or save. So instead of actually screenshotting that, you can actually save it. So we, we will, um, Deborah, myself and Dan, or maybe I'll just have Deborah and Dan do a um, rate watch, create, you know, social marketing creator. I don't know. We'll, we'll do some call where we'll teach all the ways to use rate watch on zoom, on social media, how to text it. Uh, Dan, what do you think of that idea, by the way? Which Dan? Dan Raw, which Dan. Arnold. I love that idea. I think it's phenomenal. And by the way, Dan, I, you probably weren't on in the beginning, but I gave you an apology because all those war slides were because you asked for them. And then like a schmuck, I never gave them to you. Instead, I gave them to the world. And that's not a very good friend. I'm sorry. Dan, I, I, heard you, man. That. I, I heard you and I commented and I said, all good, brother. I love you. It's all good. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, guys. So Deborah, take us home. What are some taking action notes and some one to many ideas? Well, first of all, we've got four D's on the call. I don't know if we've ever had that before. Now I just need to pull Denise in. We'll have five. <laughs> but, okay, so these are your taking action notes. So I would screenshot exactly what Dan just shared or that first slide that Dan Rawich had that showed the wars and the, the impacts. I would do a mass email out with a video so that you're also explaining. You just give it a nugget. And guys, remember, it's the hook that's most important. So Dave Savage is actually really good at writing hooks. If you take the very start of just this segment where it says impact of war on the markets and interest rates, that would be a great hook that you could put, that you could either put over your, exactly what Dan explained, where you take a screenshot, you upload it to your story, you could make that your hook as the comments, but I would do a video. I love video. I think, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, a video is worth a thousand pictures. And this is kind of complicated, but this isn't a message I would just do once, it's like not just today. You're going to have to consistently send the same message out so that you're educating your borrowers, your future borrowers, your agent partners, and together through consistency, there could be a paradigm shift of where the market is headed and how to best prepare for that. But um, I think another great strategy would be a TCA, where Dave, what TCA would you recommend to best in show this visual that you would do? Um, you know, I, I always think, you know, cost of waiting in today's market is hot and, and interest rate options. And you, and you could show, hey, rates last week, rates this week, and rates where they're going. And, and, and lots of people, they do cost of waiting. It's always like a year ago, today, and a year in the future. Guys, you could do a week. You could do three months. You could do... Um, I love different, that. Different time periods. And I, I can't remember, I think it was um, Gracie Morrow was showing her cost of waiting and she was showing it in three months or six months. And I thought, you know what, that's good because people have a hard time thinking a year from now, yeah. but dude, you could do next month. Like, hey, our concern between now and this month, uh, what could that mean? Hey, Dan, could you do a little three minute video um, either later today for the community and just kind of net out what you think rates are going to do in the next um, two weeks. And, and we didn't, you really didn't get to cover it. You let us know that, Hey, rates are going to come down someday, but, but like, when do you think that's going to, if you could just do a less than five minute video as kind of a follow-up to this, sure. and it can also help get everybody addicted to the rate watch app guys. You can go to the app store rate watch, type it in, God, and I don't know if people realize it, it's one of the 20 top apps in the mortgage business. Like if you go to the app store and you type in the word mortgage, you're going to find both the rate watch app and the mortgage coach app. They're always in the top 30 and recently they've been in the top 20. So check that out. Okay. So to put a bow on it, your two homework assignments for your one to many is send a mass, either it's an email text or on social media today using that screenshot of either from Rate Watch or that first slide. And then for Tuesday, for your TCA Tuesday, I want you to do the one that Dave just explained where you can say where we were. And again, we're looking, looking back at either a week or a month to where we are now and where we could be 
headed. So those are the two action items I want you all to do for your one to many. All right, guys, well, we're two minutes over. Dan Rawich, dude, you are a massive gift to the mortgage industry and to the mortgage coach community. I appreciate 15 years of leadership in this community, bro. I just can't thank you enough. You know, literally guys, for over a decade, every single day, Dan has been creating a, you know, they used to be longer. They used to be like five and 10 minutes. And I go, Dan, dude, we got to get you yeah. down to like three minutes. <laughs> And uh, he used to say, he used to say, I know you can get this shorter. I was like, I can't, I got too much to say. I know. I, I always struggle to go three minutes. Yeah. And, 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 well, and he also has that outlet. He's got that market mentorship program where he goes longer, you know, there's like seven and 10 minutes. So if you want to be a yeah. nerd, go there. If you just want to be a bad ass, best mortgage professional in America, be a mortgage coach, download the rate watch app, do everything Deborah just said. And guys, this is a wrap. If you have not subscribed to the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, subscribe today. Dan, dude, it's been way too long since I've seen you, man. I gotta, we gotta get together in the real world, man. I agree. All right, guys. Take care, everybody. This is a wrap. Thanks for the support, guys. Bye.